So today, D-Wave, ticker symbol QBTS, hit a 52-week high. Also, another ticker we cover on this channel, Quantum Computing Inc., QUBT, reported earnings after hours. I listened to that earnings call and did a little bit of digging. And I have some comments to share with you all. QBTS and their 52-week high, and we're going to do a little bit of React. So we'll have a lot to cover, and let's jump right in. All right, guys, so I have the heat map pulled up. Today wasn't the best day in the market. It just was kind of flat with some sell-off. We saw Nvidia actually close a little bit down today after uh, quite a few days of a rally. Amazon took a hit, Tesla did as well. And we saw that our tech in general either traded sideways or sold off a little bit today. Let's take a look at our quantum watch list. So we saw that Amgen was the leader today with QUBT, the, the ticker we're going to cover today and their earnings. They had a little rally of 3.47% going into earnings. We'll also look at the aftermarket movement. We see that some of our tickers like ARQQ and LAES, our quantum cybersecurity plays, ended up down the chart today. Rigetti gave back a little bit of its gains. And even QBTS, after it's reaching its 52 week high, was not able to sustain those levels and traded into the red. And that was more, or more of an indication of the wider market and that the wider market wasn't that strong today. We've had a very nice rally and a lot of gains in some days. There's just, it's the price we pay. You gotta pay to play. Uh, some days the market just sells off a little bit and that's okay. That's healthy for these stocks. And when we're looking at what's the possible next leg up, we want actually, we want to see some of these stocks hold these levels or trade sideways because that creates a bigger level of support for the future. So let's take a look at QUBT because I was on the earnings call today and they've posted their first quarter 2025 financial results. And basically what it boiled down to is their revenue is up of year over year. Their expenses also increased. And they did beat on EPS, but overall it was a mixed earnings call. It was a mixed earnings and the earnings call was a little bit strange and I took some notes from it, but long story short, there are some highlights. They just built their foundry in Tempe, Arizona. So they did their grand opening. I'll show you that news article. And then they also are guiding, not guiding, but they're, they're saying we think revenue and demand is going to increase. So we've done some internal reconfiguration of our leadership to make sure we're ready for that revenue. And we know that QUBT and a lot of these quantum stocks are trading at very, very rich valuations. So when we don't see huge revenue, then all of the other business decisions come under question. So after hours, we see at this point in time, just a very mild pop at one point after hours, QUBT had gone up to 1025. And we are now trading at about 953, which is still a little bit higher than close, but not a huge earnings bullish move. Now, about 70% of the time, according to a Barron's article I looked at earlier, QUBT does trade higher following earnings. So do keep an eye on QUBT tomorrow morning at market open as we could see a move at that point. So I wanted to take a look at this article. Quantum Computing Inc. hosts a ribbon cutting to celebrate their grand opening of their quantum photonic chip foundry in tempe arizona 
The construction was completed in March 2025, followed shortly by the finalizations of its certifications. The opening of the quantum photonic chip foundry is a milestone achievement in QCI's growth strategy, strengthening our manufacturing capabilities, supporting near and long-term revenue growth, and positioning us to accelerate innovation in both quantum and nanophotonic markets. Arizona Commerce had an article about it, and I did find this image of the ribbon cutting. So interesting. So I'm going to tie this concept to the React we're doing a little bit later in this video, but basically QCI, Quantum Computing Inc., is putting photons to work, and that's also what Xanadu is doing. And it does seem like a promising approach with quantum computing. We're going to learn more about that. We're going to look at, at the video, but essentially it does seem in the neighborhood of the same approach of Xanadu. All right, we're going to take a quick look at QETS who hit a 52 week high today. And that was exciting to see because if we look back at the six month chart, we've called some levels on the channel before. And we actually broke through a pretty important level, which is indicating still there's a lot of bullish momentum and buying pressure for D-Wave and QBTS. So we have rejected of this 1192 level four times before today. We see that today we broke above 1192 and we're going to get into the day chart and look at what that looked like. So we had a period of the trading session today where we actually rejected off of this 1192. And then, so we had that rally, then we had another rally and we actually touched, it looks like we were at 1250 at the highest point of the day. But what I also want you to take a look at, which I found interesting, is on the way down, QBTS wanted to use this 1192 as a support. And as you can see, there were multiple little baby bounces off of 1192. And I've talked about this as a prediction, but my prediction in a bullish case for QBTS remains that we break above this 1192, which we saw happen today. Now we have a clear area of resistance at 1250. But if we can start seeing price action like this, then the next and the all time high for QBTS was 1333. So in the most bullish of bull cases, we would retest all time highs on QBTS. Another thing I want to note about D wave and the price action is now we are, we are in many trading days. So we've, we've had six trading days and we've really only gone under this 1034 level one time. And that was at a market open and we exploded up. So I have drawn this horizontal line 1034 because I think that's starting to come in play maybe as a home base for QBTS. In the macro we're seeing, we're seeing it kind of chop around this channel so we could see a continuation of that. We've seen Rigetti trade sideways between seven and $10 for months. But this previous 937 that I've called out on the channel is also another nice level of support. So D-Wave is looking quite strong and still quite bullish. And we didn't have the best macro day. So it's possible that we could see D-Wave continue this run if the macro continues to improve. And D-Wave is very good with their marketing and PR. So they may have some tricks up their sleeves, some surprises for investors. There may be new announcements or a new new research, new partnerships, new computer sales. And we're sitting at 11 bucks right now. We're holding $11. So it's very bullish for D-Wave. Um, I remain quite bullish on D-Wave going forward in the near and long term. And if you enjoy content like this, please consider leaving a like or subscribe. Good luck tomorrow in the markets. Talk to you soon.